sir. <coughs> I have seen your one of the video on YouTube about what is God. And I understand that God for me is whenever I have a desire and uh, I want something from the future purpose, then God comes from me. So should I stop worshiping God? Yeah, obviously, if God is the one who grants you your desires, then you are not worshipping God, you are worshipping your desires. Stop worshipping your desires, obviously. Who is God for you? Does God really exist? For you it does. Who is God for you? The one who grants you your wish. My faith. Faith in what? Faith in what? When do you go to God? Let me put it this way. When you are afraid or when you are greedy. Ah, so, Alright, that's a payment that you must make. You granted my wish. Thank you. Otherwise, you know, things might be in doubt for the next time. He might feel bad. I granted her wish and she didn't even say thank you. He gets hurt. But if someone is worshipping God without any content, without anything, just... Does that happen? Why should we assume? Have you ever seen somebody who goes to a temple without being programmed or conditioned? If he is not programmed or conditioned, why will he go to a temple? Just, so for example, sir, in a bathroom... Gather the question first. I want to meet God. If I am not programmed or conditioned, why will I go to a temple? How do I know that God lives in a temple? Not in a temple, sir. If I am not programmed, why will I go to a temple? So like we... So you are programmed, right? For example, sir, when you go to Vrindavan, that Bhakti Bihari temple, I just like it there. I don't know why, sir. You also like watching movies, you also like watching girls. You like so many things and in fact many temples ensure that they give you what you like. There are temples where so many foreigners come and those temples are real crowd pullers. They give you what you like, cute, young, white ladies dancing to Krishna. What a scene! Even non-devotees, faithless people become devoted. Today I have come to believe in Krishna. Can I have a little more of her? <laughs> Hare Rama, Hare Krishna. What a sight. Sir, my question is, does God really exist? What is God? Because I don't believe in God. How does it matter? No sir, because there are many people... He believes in God. He and believes in God and he does not know what he believes in. You don't believe in God and you do not know what you don't believe in. I say something to you in Japanese. Do you know Japanese? No. Do you know Japanese? I say something to you in Japanese. And you start dancing, thinking that I have complimented you. And he gets enraged, thinking that I have abused him. How does it matter? Neither you know what I have said, nor does he know. Neither he knows what God is. Does a worshipper know God? Does a non-worshipper know God? Does a believer know God? Does a non-believer know God? So what is the point in believing or non-believing? Go ahead, do what you want to do. It's anyway your own fantasy, your own imagination. When you say I don't believe in God, what do you not believe in? What is God? How can you not believe in something without even knowing it? You are not getting my question. I write A in front of you and I ask you whether it is positive or negative. Or let me just say, real or imaginary. I write something and I ask you whether it is real or imaginary. I just write root A. Tell me whether it is real or imaginary. Can you answer this question? Yes. How can you answer this question? Do you know what A is? You can imagine what A is and keep answering the question. 
You don't even know what A is, but you are telling me what root A is. Real or imaginary? But sir, is it possible to find the value of A? I mean, is it possible that... Ah, that's a different question. So that, so then, is it possible? Is it, is it really possible? For whom? The same mind that keeps on believing in all the rubbish, the same mind that believes in career and marriage and kids and social networking, will the same mind ever come to know God? The same mind that believes in all the falsehoods that are thrown at you, will the same mind ever also realize God? So that's what I'm asking. Who will realize God? So the one who has, uh, I mean, who doesn't have any fear, who has one who is content, who has realized self. So who is it a question of knowing what God is, or is it first a question of purifying your own mind? First, you have to purify yourself, then only you can understand. Only that kind of a mind can really ask. Only that mind deserves to ask what is God, and you don't know whether it would ask. It might just drop the question. But we are so interested in God. And you know, the funny part is, the more dirty your mind is, the more you talk about God. Have you not seen that? Go to your temples. Who do you find there? Chances are you will find some of the most dumb or most evil people there. You go to your temples, you either find dumb people or mischievous people. They are the ones who are most interested in God. Dumb people, why? Because they do not realize anything. No intelligence. So whatever is told to them, they just accept and they form a crowd and they start singing. Have you not seen that? Some stupid crowd, 200 people, who don't even know what they are saying, what that shlok means, or what that bhajan means. They don't even know, and yet they are singing. Is that not dumbness? Yes. Or evil people, who want to use God for their own nefarious purposes. There were people in Hitler's team, who were very God-loving. We are talking of Gita. One of them loved the Gita. He said, you know, that's what Krishna is saying. Kill. <laughs> ah, kill without considering that the other fellow is your own family member. Or brother. Or grandfather. This is a wrong interpretation of Gita. What do you mean by the right interpretation, Gita? Who will interpret this same mind? This same mind that is jealous, possessive, insecure. How can this mind interpret the Gita? So, uh, like uh, there are some paranormal activities take place around the world. So are those real? No activity is paranormal. Activity means it is within the purview of the mind. We started with talking of action in inaction. Don't you? Remember we said all action is in the purview of space and time. So there is nothing called paranormal activity. There is just activity. Normal, paranormal, metanormal, whatever you want to call it. And all activity is necessarily in the world, in three dimensions, in time, x, y, z, t. And that is time. And that is mind. That is mind. Pure and simple. You may Dream up whatever you want to dream. Hmm? It's all happening in the mind. Nowhere else. The things which are not scientifically explained. Tomorrow they will be explained. It's alright. Or you might be dreaming. It's alright. How does it matter? There is nothing of interest there. So you have to define God. You have to define God. You have to define God. तब मेरे अंडरस्टैंडिंग में तो जैसे आप बोल रहे हो कन्वेंस वो मेरा ठीक है वो अपने जैसे कन्वेंस करते हैं वो मेरे लिए वो भी ठीक लगता है
शरीर किसम बात है गीता लिखी मतलब किसम मान कुछ थे गीता किसने लिखी फिर ऐसा मुझे सब मैं बोली थी तो फिर मतलब ये ह्यूमन की अंडरस्टैंडिंग ही तो है कि उन्होंने खुद लिखा है किसम मान को मान बेटा गीता वाज देयर बिफोर यू केम नॉट इनटू दिस वर्ल्ड इनटू दिस सेशन सर बिफोर यू केम इनटू दिस सेशन वी वर टॉकिंग ऑफ द गीता सो द गीता इज मोर एंशिएंट देन यू आर इन बोथ वेज मैं बोल रहा हूं कि Uh, to understand what I'm saying. Had Krishna really been so immaterial, why would we start the session with him? He has said something beautiful, and we took that up, and twice or thrice we have referred to him, and he was a supremely intelligent being, so intelligent that what he has said. stands the test of time it is relevant today and it will be relevant always hmm? it is not only intellectual it is higher than intellectual and what your godmen are saying that is not even intellectual that is less than intellectual so don't you have the eyes to see and the ears to hear don't you find any difference between the baba log and krishna what the baba log is saying i mean forget about spirituality at least there has to be an intellectual content the spirituality comes way later if you check their iq you might find that it is no more than 4.8 the fellow cannot even talk sense how will he talk spirituality he does not know 2 plus 2 4 how will he know magic to go beyond rationality first of all you must be rational you must understand rationality he does not know maths he does not know physics he does not know the world but he thinks that he knows the ultimate truth in fact he does not even think that way if you ask him he'll say no i don't know anything these are idiots who come to me he'll be very quick to admit even he does not agree to what he says how can you agree to what he says kyunki sir wo itne saare log ek sath batate hain kisi cheez ko that is it jo pure sabke samne pata chal raha hai isliye wo the biggest lies can be told only in front of crowds when you are face to face with me it becomes difficult to lie to you because now it is human to human but when it's a crowd then one can easily lie mass is accepting everyone <laughs> you go to his residence and you look at him in the eye it will be difficult for him But when it's a crowd, you can say anything. You know. Say it loudly. Just say it loudly and appear confident, and ensure that you have goons who will bash up anybody who says something. It makes you uncomfortable. <laughs>